It's Friday, May 19th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right, so admittedly, it's a very slow news week. There's really not a whole lot going on. Tons of third-party stuff, as always. Um, Destiny 2 is getting, you know, huge reveals and stuff. Digital Foundry has a piece on uh, the Gran Turismo Sport beta and how that's coming along. So that's all well and good, but there's really nothing totally eye-catching. But we do have one news story that we can discuss at greater lengths because there's a number of things that this can kind of go into. And we, ne we haven't really touched on a, a sort of rumor and topic like this in a while, so you'll, you'll tell by the title already. Um, just recently this past week, and it made a few rounds, but I think a lot of people kind of get it already and they sort of dismissed it right away. Um, PlayStation Netherlands on Facebook tweeted a photo. Um, I believe they also did, uh, did this on Twitter, and the photo just shows a bunch of PlayStation icons, and hey, what is that? Spyro the Dragon. Um, obviously, we have Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy coming uh, somewhat soon. Now this is sort of, you know, initially a lot of people might see this and go, oh, does that mean that there's a, uh, a Spyro remaster in the works? You know, Act Activision is currently doing it with Crash. They could certainly do it with Spyro uh, the Dragon. That would be great, by the way. I'm not disputing how awesome this would be, but... Um, like I said, this didn't make too many rounds, so a lot of people are already sort of dismissing this right away. And for a number of good reasons, one thing being the, the image is very sort of crudely made, I guess you could say. It looks quite obvious to me that um, whoever is in charge of the account or whoever was in charge of making that sort of imagery just sort of had basic Photoshop skills and went to Google and typed in Kratos PNG image and Spyro PNG image and just sort of snapped everything onto a background. I would know. I've done this many a times. <laughs> so... That's sort of what it looks like to me right away, uh, and this is what, this, here's the thing, this immediately brings us back to, now if you remember a while, whether you were watching this channel or not, you know that Sony teased Crash Bandicoot multiple times throughout the last, uh, I'd say about two years. And it, here's the thing, here's why this is sort of a similar situation, It was kind. it's kind of in the same veins of what's going on here. Uh, if you remember, every time Sony did tease Crash Bandicoot, it was always a very crude image. It was always, um, you know, aged Crash Bandicoot art, so it wasn't anything new or anything that was sort of lend itself to being um, from a new title or anything like that. And, and more often than not, it was always posted by either PlayStation Netherlands or PlayStation Brazil, I think, did it once or twice. Um, it's not often that the US uh, accounts, the North American accounts, um, or Europe for that matter, usually, it's they, they hardly ever did. I think they did it once or twice regarding Crash Bandicoot, and there's the infamous situation where Sean Layden uh, did E3 2015, maybe 16, or maybe it was PSX, don't remember, but he was wearing the Crash Bandicoot shirt. That right away, people freaked out, and then Sean was just like, oh no, I just liked it, because that yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a fan of Crash Bandicoot, and people were like, why would you wear that? I remember when we were filming that, uh, that discussion, it was just like, why? Why why would you wear that, Sean? You you know people are going to say shit about that. Um, now, to, it's interesting, because now that we know Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy is a thing, we can kind of look back on those previous sort of scenarios and, and wonder, was that what PlayStation was kind of telling us? And if you remember at the time when we did those videos, I was basically telling you guys, like, don't read too much into this, especially since there are sort of these low-ball accounts from... Um, the other PlayStation divisions where there's not really a whole lot of followers. Maybe there's not a whole lot of um, sort of, what do you call it, quality control for what sort of gets tweeted and what gets sent out. And um, the imagery always kind of proved to you that that was sort of the situation there. And so here's what we've also got with the Spyro thing. So I still to this day think that those original posts from all those other PlayStation, Facebook, and Twitter accounts really had nothing to do with the, e the end result of the Insane Trilogy being a thing. Um, Maybe the fact that Sean was wearing that shirt is something that he knew, and because he never has officially admitted a link between those two things of Insane Trilogy becoming a thing and him wearing the t-shirt. But I would have to assume at some point maybe that was a thing, maybe he was really hinting at that. But the other accounts, I think that's just a load of BS. I think they were just, you know, doing it just to just to do it, just to sort of play at uh, fans' hearts and, and nostalgia and all that. Sony loves to do that, so that's kind of what I feel like happened there. So now you look at this with a Spyro thing. So that's kind of what I'm getting at uh, in, in this same scenario. Don't read too much into this. Um, it's it's so clear. Like it's it's a very crudely made image with um, old Spyro. I think I believe that image of Spyro is from um, Skylanders. If I'm if I'm correct, I could be totally wrong about that. But that's what it looks like, right? So I just take that for what it is. It's just PlayStation Nether Nether Netherlands, and there's all, all those other PlayStation icons. If they were to have some sort of announcement like that in the pipeline, they wouldn't tease it or introduce it or announce it in that, in, in, in this way, right? You know, you, you don't need me to tell you, to, to tell you guys that they want to save an announcement for, like that 
for E3 or PlayStation Experience or some sort of major announcement or venue and they want it to be on their terms. Um, but at the same time, uh, it sparks another sort of conversation. Will Spyro, uh, Spyro Trilogy become a thing based off the fact that Activision is currently doing the Insane Trilogy with Crash Bandicoot? And I think this will be a um, sort of thing where Activision is going to see how the Insane Trilogy does. And we had already... We're talking about the time exclusivity thing. It seems, you know, seems like that's going to be the case where the game is going to come out to, say, X1 or Switch and PC uh, a year after. Wouldn't be surprised if it happens. And if it does, um, I'm assuming they're, I'm, I would assume it's going to move a, a decent number of units. I don't think it's going to do amazing. Um, but it should do pretty well. I think a lot of, I think the interest is there for a lot of people that want to jump into these games, and it's really being released at a budget price anyway, so I think, yeah, it's going to, it's going to do very well for them, and it looks great for what it is. I mean, I, I think they're definitely going to see a return back on their investment. So, if, when you have this, it's not even a thing where it's like, it has to do amazing. If they just see the return, they can warrant doing it with another IP, and the, the, the next step would be Spyro. For sure it would be. Because that's the whole idea. Three PlayStation icons, or three three classic PlayStation games, the first three Crash games, and you know, Spyro and Crash always go hand in hand, and Activision has both of those. So I think Spyro would be their next bet, and that's why I think they're doing Crash first. Not only were a lot of people mostly vocal for Crash Bandicoot, but it just seems like if you were going to do one, one or the other, Crash would be the one to do it. And if you see your return on Crash Bandicoot, that would justify doing Spyro the, uh, Spyro the Dragon. I was going to say You're the Dragon. You're the Dragon is my favorite one. Um, which I really hope this happens, by the way. I, I don't want to be in a situation where it never, you know, where, where I say this is BS and you'll never see a Spyro remaster because I would love to see something like that for sure. Um, I like Spyro more than Crash Bandicoot personally. Uh, I actually love the Spyro games to death. Um, they're one of my favorite franchises. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. And to see those games remade the way the Insane Trilogy is being remade, God damn, would I love that. I mean, you can go to a GameStop right now, actually, and um, granted, the Insane Trilogy is coming out r really soon. You don't have to wait that much longer. But um, there are demo kiosks for the game that you can go play right now, and it's awesome. What's great is that, and I went out and played it myself, what's great about the Insane Trilogy, trilogy is that um, there was really no compromise. It looked unbelievably new and, and great, but when you play it, I immediately felt... I, I immediately... There was no difference in, in the way I was playing it with compared to the original you know what i mean like the way i was moving the stick and jumping and stuff like it, it just totally felt there they didn't fuck with that at all which is great so if they do something if they do the same treatment like that for spyro the dragon i would love that especially because i feel personally that spyro the dragon is more of a or <laughs> i keep saying you're the dragon spyro the dragon the first three spyro games i th I, I feel the spyro games are a lot more it's photogenic, for lack of a better word. I think the games could look a lot prettier than Crash Bandicoot could if it were to get a sort of 2017 complete uh, overhaul treatment. Just because of the uh, the environments and uh, how varied the game is, and um, it, it's it's so much more open than Crash too. You got to keep in mind. So I think um, Spyro would be awesome, and I, I really hope that is the case. But in regards to this little post from PlayStation Netherlands. Don't look much, don't really look into it. Um, so don't look into, don't look into the post is what I'm saying. However, I think it's a very real possibility right now that Activision is, this is the cards they have laid out right now. And when you have the Insane Trilogy come out and do probably as well as it will do, I think the possibility of uh, Spyro being remastered is, uh, the odds are very good. That is the only thing I wanted to talk about with you guys this week. So if you didn't notice, uh, part one of Katamari Damase is up for our new Let's Play, so we're uh, going through the original Katamari Damase on the PlayStation 2. It's great. It's actually the um, PS2 classic from the PlayStation Store being played on PS3, so it's technically emulated, but it's still a PS2 game. Really enjoying that, uh, and that's, I, like I said, a thousand times. We are going to be done with that game very quickly. Um, I only recorded two parts, and already I'm thinking for sure the ending is going to be either part three or part four so uh, i already have to start thinking of a new game to do also if you didn't see it on twitter i got my horizon platinum i finished the game holy sh it was just a busy few months for me that's how long it took me i've already written the review the video will be soon i'm going to be on some shit now now that that's done well now that it will be done don't worry we'll get started on some regular uploads on Wednesday now finally thank you that's what was holding me back I wanted to do the horizon review before anything else why film new stuff when I keep saying I'm going to do horizon and I didn't do it also farpoint 
you'll see is installed. I'm playing it on another account, by the way. Can you see it? Yeah, smart point. Um, playing it on another account because I don't really think I'm going to get the Platinum, but I actually am uh, enjoying it, but I can see why it's not as, uh, you know, we had that Let's Talk PlayStation, like, what, two, three weeks ago, where I, where I kind of said, like, I feel like this game's going to come out and it's not going to do, do all that well. Much to my not surprised look, that's kind of the, the case. But um, I'm thinking I can get a review out for that too, since it's kind of a shorter game. But what I do need for that game, if I do get a review out, I need somebody to play co-op with. I need to actually play the co-op before I do a review of the game. So if you do have PlayStation VR and you bought Farpoint, preferably with the aim controller, um, let me know in the comments. I would love to um, possibly play with um, somebody. Probably won't be a scenario start to finish. Um, I will probably do that on my own and then we will play for maybe an hour or two just so I can sort of get a feel for that experience uh, and get footage for the review if that is the case so let me know and um, that'll be all well and good anyway that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation I'm Ryan Benike thank you all so much for talking with me and I will see you guys next Friday